Hey guys, we're going to be covering Factor Theorem with complex roots in this session. Let's get started. Now you might remember the original Factor, factor Theorem and um, recall that the Factor Theorem states that that if a polynomial P of X has a factor, X minus A, then P of A equals zero. Um, if you can't remember this, just um, uh, go back a couple of videos in this series and you should be able to find it. And the second idea that if p of a equals zero, then x minus a is a factor. So, with that in mind, we're going to try this with complex numbers. So I'm just going to have a look at one example in this session. So here's a question. Show that um, x minus i and x plus 2i are both factors of p of x, which is that really big function there, and then determine the other factor by inspection. Okay. So just like how we did with factor theorem, um, nothing changes. We, we're going to do the same thing here. So if um, x minus i is a factor, then what we can do is we can find out, um, I mean, we can actually say that x minus i is equal to 0, which means x is equal to positive i. Now we, we should be able to find f of positive i, and it should equal 0. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work out... Um, well, in this case, p of i, because p of x was the function. So, I'll write down the formula first. And then I'm going to substitute wherever x is with i. So, I'm going to get 4i to the power of 3 plus i times i to the power of 2 plus 11 times i minus 6i. Simplifying this, I'm going to get 4i cubed plus i cubed plus 11i minus 6i. Now, at this point, I know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so I could actually split the i cubed into i squared times i. Or, just to make it as simple, I'm going to simplify it first, which is 5i cubed plus 5i. I guess now I can go into substituting i squared. So this would be 5i times i squared, because i times i squared is i cubed, plus 5i. And we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so 5i times negative 1 plus 5i, and of course this would be negative 5i plus 5i, which equals 0. Therefore, x minus i is a factor. So now looking at x plus 2i. So we know that if x plus 2i is a factor, then x plus 2i equals 0, and x is equal to minus 2i. So I need to figure out p of negative 2i. And if it equals 0, then it's a factor. So I'm going to try that, p of negative 2i. So at this point, um, again, it's the same old drill. Write the equation, and then substitute wherever uh, x is with negative 2i. So I'm just going to do this real quickly here, folks. And simplifying this, I'm going to get 4 times negative 8i cubed plus i times, well, 4i cubed, minus 22i, and minus 6i. Simplifying this, I'm going to get negative 32i cubed plus 4i cubed, minus 28i. Simplifying this further, I've got minus 28i cubed, minus 28i. And you can kind of see that you, you're ending up with the same situation as you did in the um, left-hand side. You've got i cubed, so you can replace it with i squared, and of course, simplifying it, I'm going to get 28i minus 28i, which equals 0. So as you can see, uh, both of these, uh, x minus i and x plus 2i, are both factors of p of x. Now, I want to figure out the other factor. And um, to do this, I'm actually going to do this in the next slide, just because I'm out of space here. All right, moving on to the next slide. So here we go. Don't worry, guys. It's still the same question. I'm just doing um, the other factor by inspection. So what I know, what I do know is that this is my um, p of x, which is the function. Now it's x cubed. Therefore, I know that uh, there'll be three factors. The first one is already given to us, which is x minus i, and we proved it. The second one is x plus two i, which we also checked. So the last one, it's well, we don't know what it's going to be, but we know that it's going to be a x plus b. Well, in that format anyway. So, what we can do is we can inspect it. For example, 
if you look at um, the coefficient of x cubed, it's actually 4, which means x multiplied by x multiplied by ax should equal 4x cubed. So in other words, I've got 4x cubed equals x times... Whoa, hold on. I think I went uh, a little too fast there. Apologies about that. So where, where were we? We got 4x cubed equals x times x times x times ax. And this can be simplified as ax cubed. So we know that 4x cubed equals ax cubed. Therefore, we can say a is equal to 4. Okay. Now, trying to figure out the value of b. We know that um, the, the final constant will be the product of the last three numbers. So I'm just going to show you here. Um, for example, here, negative 6i should be the product of negative i times 2i times b. So writing that separately, negative 6i is equal to negative i times positive 2i multiplied by b. And simplifying this, I'm going to get negative 6i equals negative 2i squared b. Now, I know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so this would be negative 2 times negative 1b. Simplifying this, I have negative 6i equals 2b which means b is equal to negative 3i. So, with that, in my, with that in mind, now I've figured out what ax plus b is, which means I know the three factors. So the first factor was x minus i, the second factor is x plus 2i, and the third factor is 4x minus 3i. Okay, guys, uh, that's basically the idea behind... Um, Factor theorem with complex roots. Um, hope you got the, hope you got something out of this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's all for the session, guys.